The Islamic Courts Union was a group of Sharia courts that united themselves to form a rival administration to the transitional federal government of Somalia, with Sharif Sheikh Ahmed as their head. They were also known as the Joint Islamic Courts, Union of Islamic Courts, Supreme Islamic Courts Council or the Supreme Council of Islamic Courts. Western media often refer to the group as Somali Islamists. Until the end of 2006, they controlled most of southern Somalia and the vast majority of its population, including most major cities such as Jofa, Kishmaior, Beldwane, and the capital Mogadishu. The ICU was supported by warlord Yusuf in Toadi, Muhammad Siad who ruled Lower Shabal but later became defense chief of the ICU, who aided in the defeat of the Mogadishu warlords. Only the northern regions and the furthest interior regions of the south were outside their control. In December 2006, the ICU lost much territory after defeats of the battles of Badawa, Bandir Adli, and Beldwane, retreating to the capital, Mogadishu. On 28 December they abandoned Mogadishu, leaving the city in chaos while they moved south towards Kishmaor, which allowed the TFG and Ethiopian troops to take over the city. After a stand at the Battle of Gilib, the ICU abandoned the city of Kishmaor on 1 January 2007. Stripped of almost all their territory, it was speculated the ICU would pursue guerrilla-style warfare against the government. Instead, hardline Islamists broke ranks from the ICU and formed other militant groups, such as Al-Shabaab and Hezbollah Islam, to continue the war against the government. The less militant members of the ICU went into exile in Eritrea and Djibouti, where they formed the Alliance for the Reliberation of Somalia in September 2007. In the two years following the ICU's ouster from Mogadishu, the hardline Islamist groups concentrated their power in the south and west of Somalia, taking ground from both the TFG and ICU. By January 2009, a reconciliation and power-sharing deal was brokered between the transitional federal government and the Djibouti contingent from the former Islamic Courts Union which resulted in the expansion of the parliament and the election of Sheikh Sharif Ahmed former leader of the ICU, as president of the transitional federal government. History Before the Second Battle of Mogadishu after the collapse of the Somali government in 1991, a system of Sharia-based Islamic courts became the main judicial system, funded through fees paid by litigants. Over time the courts began to offer other services such as education and health care. The courts also acted as local police forces, being paid by local businesses to reduce crime. The Islamic courts took on the responsibility for halting robberies and drug dealing, as well as stopping the showing of what it claims to be pornographic films in local movie houses. Somalia is almost entirely Muslim, and these institutions initially had wide public support. The early years of the courts include such outfits as Sheikh Ali Diaz, established in North Mogadishu in 1994 and the Beldwane Court initiated in 1996. They soon saw the sense in working together through a joint committee to promote security. This move was initiated by four of the courts, Ifka Hallen, Circulo, Warshada and Hararia Ale, who formed a committee to coordinate their affairs, to exchange criminals from different clans and to integrate security forces. In 1999 the group began to assert its authority. Supporters of the Islamic courts and other institutions united to form the ICU, an armed militia. In April of that year they took control of the main market in Mogadishu and, in July, captured the road from Mogadishu to Afgoy. Their system of government, controlled by judges, is known as a critocracy. Eritrean assistance According to the United Nations and various sources, the Eritrean government has armed and financed the ICU for many years. Together with some Ethiopian opposition groups such as the OLF, 
Eritrea sent shiploads of arms to the ICU and other rebels in southern Somalia. It was also reported that the Eritrean government had sent advisors and engineers and mine laying experts. After many denials from the Eritrean government, Islamic Courts Union leader Ruiz admitted that the Eritrean government had been assisting the ICU, although there was no mention of Eritrean troops or advisors. After the Somali transitional government defeated the Islamists and took Mogadishu, the Somali Prime Minister alleged that Eritrean soldiers had been captured in Mogadishu. Further Eritrean fighters were allegedly killed by Somali security officers in June 2007. A governor of one of Somalia's southern districts also confirmed the continued alliance of Eritrean fighters with al-Qaeda and ICU militants. According to the Los Angeles Times, various ICU fighters were caught as they tried to escape to Eritrea. Many of the ICU leadership and jihadist leaders are believed to have found refuge in Eritrea. Other foreign fighters Various foreign fighters were said to be helping the ICU, as suicide bombing tactics are rare even among extremist Somali Muslims. The use of such bombers suggested deeper foreign jihadist assistance. In January, Somali sources said they had defeated or arrested many Arab fighters. In June, numerous foreign pro-ICU fighters were detected trying to flee in boats from the Puntland region. The regional governor told the media that the Islamist fighters had arrived to cause trouble and that Puntland troops were searching for them. The U.S. military also targeted other jihadist and al-Qaeda cells, particularly those affiliated with the bombers of the U.S. Embassy in Kenya in 1998. The BBC reported a Pentagon claim that a senior of al-Qaeda member associated with the ICU had been captured in Somalia and transferred to the U.S. military prison in Guantanamo Bay. After conquering Mogadishu in the year 2000, the courts formed a union of Islamic courts, partly to consolidate resources and power and partly to aid in handing down decisions across rather than within clan lines. Yet the ICU remained firmly established in the Hawiya clan. As the courts began to assert themselves as the dispensers of justice they came into conflict with the secular warlords who controlled most of the city. In reaction to the growing power of the ICU, a group of Mogadishu warlords formed the Alliance for the Restoration of Peace and Counterterrorism. This was a major change, as these warlords had been fighting each other for many years. By the beginning of 2006, these two groups had clashed repeatedly, and in May 2006 it escalated into street fighting in the capital, claiming the lives of more than 300 people. On 5 June 2006, the ICU claimed that they were in control of Mogadishu. Meanwhile, in the United States, the Bush administration neither confirmed nor denied support for either side. However, it was reported that American officials had anonymously confirmed that the U.S. government was funding the ARPCT, due to concerns that the ICU is linked to al-Qaeda and is sheltering three al-Qaeda leaders involved in past terror attacks, including the 1998 U.S. Embassy bombings in Kenya and Tanzania. On 6 June 2006, the ICU further claimed it was in control of all the lands up to 100 kilometers inland from Mogadishu. The warlords were reported to have either been captured or to have fled the city, abandoning most of their weapons with the majority fleeing to Jofa, which was taken by the ICU militia on 14 June. This brought the ICU in control of much of the weaponry in the country, which made a resurgence by the warlords difficult without outside support. The ICU also controlled significant territory outside the capital, including the important town of Ballard. In mid-August, ICU militiamen swept into the port town of Hobio, 500 kilometers north of Mogadishu, meeting no opposition. 
The ICU organized a clean-up campaign for the streets of Mogadishu on 20 July. This was the first time litter and rubbish had been collected in the entire city since it collapsed into chaos over a decade earlier. On 15 July 2006, the Islamic courts reopened Mogadishu International Airport which had been closed since the withdrawal of the international forces in 1995. The first airplane chartered by the Arab League flew from the airport for the first time in 11 years picking up Islamic courts delegates to the Sudanese capital of Khartoum. On 24 August 2006, the ICU captured Haradhir, some 500 kilometers northeast of Mogadishu, which had become a safe haven for pirates who had forced shipping firms and international organizations to pay large ransoms for the release of vessels and crews. On 25 August 2006 the Islamic courts reopened the historic Mogadishu seaport, which had been one of the busiest in East Africa but had been shut down for the prior 10 years. In September 2006 the Islamist courts strengthened their control of Kishmayor. The Somalis in Kishmayor demonstrated against ICU, shouting, no to al-Qaeda operatives, but the ICU took control, shooting at protesters, killing at least three people and dispersing the crowd. On 5 October 2006, the Islamic courts declared the formation of the Supreme Islamic Sharia Court of Banadir province ending all tribal Islamic courts in the capital. War with Ethiopia On 8 December 2006, the Islamic Courts Union claimed to have been involved in heavy fighting with Somali transitional government forces backed by Ethiopian troops. On 21 December heavy fighting erupted between ICU forces and Ethiopian-backed forces. The battles happened initially in two areas, the military base of Dainune and the military base of Iredale. The ICU made calls for jihad against Ethiopia, which were met by international Mujahideen volunteers arriving in Somalia. The ICU lost a considerable amount of territory after defeats of the 20-26 December battles of Badawa, Bay region, Bandir Adli, in Mudug and Battle of Beldwain, here in region, retreating to the capital, Mogadishu. Resignation of leadership on 27 December 2006, after a brief skirmish earlier in the day at the Battle of Jofa, the leaders of the ICU, including Sheikhs Hassan Dahiris, Sharif Sheikh Ahmed and Abdurrahman Janaka resigned in a capitulation recognizing the new state of affairs in Somalia. They issued the following decisions. 1. It is a national duty to protect the sovereignty and the integrity of Somalia and its people. 2. The ICU allows that Somalis should have the option to determine the future and would be ready for taking over the responsibility. 3. The Islamic Courts Union agreed not to allow anyone to create violence in Mogadishu and anybody that is found guilty would be brought before the law and would be taken for the suitable punishment according to the Islamic Sharia. 4. The ICU fighters are responsible for establishing the security and stability in the Somali capital Mogadishu. 5. Lastly, the ICU is calling on all the Islamic fighters in Somalia, wherever they may be, to maintain security and stability in their localities and get ready in the police stations and other security installations. On 28 December, the ICU withdrew from the capital. Somali Prime Minister Ali Mohamed Gerdi stated the legislature would shortly declare a period of martial law. Pursuit of the ICU after abandoning control of Mogadishu. Leaders from the ICU proceeded to fortify the Jubba River Valley area including the towns of Gilib and Kishmayor. Days later, on December 31, Ethiopian and Somali forces attacked Gilib, after which ICU forces abandoned Kishmayor. In January 2007, as the ICU retreated, its leaders vowed to wage guerrilla war. They were pursued to Ras Kamboni, where they were militarily engaged by Ethiopian and Somali TFG forces. Kenyan and U.S. forces enforced a border patrol and naval blockade. 
followed by U.S. airstrikes against suspected al-Qaeda members embedded within the ICU militias. On 10 January, a report by Somali Presidential Chief of Staff, Abdurizik Hassan stated the U.S. airstrikes had killed al-Qaeda member Fazul Abdullah Muhammad and leaders of the Islamic Courts Union including Abdullahi Mola Mali, Abdurrahman Janakau, and a third unidentified person. The bodies had reportedly been recovered by Ethiopian military personnel. Fazul Abdullah Mohammed was later confirmed by U.S. forces to have survived the U.S. air raid on 8 January 2007. Abdurrahman Janakau survived those attacks and is currently the Justice Minister in his friend Sheikh Sharif Sheikh Ahmed's TFG government. Islamist insurgency after their fall from power, many ICU militiamen went into hiding. Attacks were carried out against Ethiopian and TFG troops, and the group was reformed as the popular resistance movement in the land of the two migrations, known more commonly as Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab would go on to capture large portions of the southern half of the country, leading to the beginning of Operation Linda NCHI in 2011 which saw Kenyan forces cross into Somalia. Reconciliation with the transitional government The Alliance for the Reliberation of Somalia was originally formed in September 2007 as a movement to militarily oppose the Somali transitional federal government and the main military allies, Ethiopia. Since then, the group split into two major factions those who sought reconciliation with the TFG and those opposed to reconciliation. Djibouti Peace Agreement In May-June 2008, the Djibouti-based wing of the ARS and the transitional federal government met in a conference mediated by the UN, which resulted in an 11-point peace agreement signed and announced on 9 June 2008. Because of this, the ARS split into two major wings. Those based in Eritrea, aligned with former ICU leader Sheikh Hassan Dahiris, who are adamantly opposed to cooperation with the TFG or Ethiopia, and those who were based in Djibouti, aligned with former ICU leader Sharif Sheikh Ahmed, who were open to reconciliation with the nascent national government. Sharif Sheikh Ahmed elected president on 1 February 2009. The ICU faction leader and chairman of the ARS Sharif Sheikh Ahmed was elected the president of the transitional federal government. Al-Shabaab declared war on him and pledged to continue their attacks on the TFG.